What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our SEC football channel. We've shown you the 2020 schedule for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Now we give you a projected record based off of that schedule and based off of their percent chance to win each game that we are giving them. And again, we're just kind of grouping these teams together. This is not an official prediction, by the way. This is just a projection based off of the schedule uh, and based off of, of how I anticipate these teams performing and also just looking at recent history uh, between these all the teams as well. Uh, so let's go now and look at the scale. If it's a not, if it's a green, we're going to say that's a 99% game. Vanderbilt pretty much has a guaranteed chance to win. 80% they should win, favored by you know double digits, 10 plus points. 60% is a game where the spread will be closer to six or seven or eight, but they would be favored in those games. And then of course you got your 50-50 games, and then you uh, flip that around the other way for games where you're going to be underdogs. So that's the scale for Vanderbilt. We'll see what it comes out to be here as you look at the schedule. And we start with the green, the 99% games. I think you can say that this team will beat Mercer. I think that they will beat Mercer. That's really the only win that's a guarantee. I mean, maybe, nothing's a guarantee, but we feel like Vanderbilt should be able to win that game. And so we're going to call that a green. And then we look at the rest of the schedule. Are there games where they should win, where they'll be favored by double digits? It's It's... Kind of tough to say. I mean, you look at the schedule. We're going to say Colorado State and Louisiana Tech. I do think Vanderbilt will be favored just because they're from the SEC and all that, and you're playing a group of five teams. But Louisiana Tech and Colorado State are teams that could be capable of pulling off an upset here. So I would not I would not consider these guaranteed wins if I was Vanderbilt. They have got to bring their A game. But from a talent perspective, they should be the better team, and they should be able to win those matchups. A lot of question marks, though, for this Vanderbilt team. Uh, we go now to the other side of it. How about games where they're going to be underdogs and have not much of a chance to win? we got Georgia on the road. Don't really see Vanderbilt competing there. Kentucky uh, on the road. I think Kentucky is going to be very solid this year. Florida, Texas a and I mean, I just don't see Vanderbilt winning these games and really being competitive. And even Tennessee. I know Vanderbilt has, has played Tennessee tough in recent years. But you look at the trajectory of each of these two programs, it's a total opposite direction. Uh, Tennessee, we're we're buying into the to finish for the Vols last year. We're going to say that this Tennessee team is going to be pretty good this year. If they're the Tennessee team, though, that we saw in the first half of the season, then I do think that's a winnable game for Vanderbilt. But uh, I think Tennessee is going to be pretty good. And then we go to the games where I give them a 40% chance to win. Again, they'll be underdogs by six or seven, maybe eight points in these matchups. We've got Missouri on the road week two. Uh, they got Kansas State. Remember, Kansas State beat Mississippi State just last year. And then Ole Miss as well. I think Ole Miss will be favored against Vanderbilt. It's at home for Vandy, so it's possible the Commodores uh, could find a way to maybe win that game. But I think they'll be underdogs. Uh, I, I really do. Uh, Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin, I think they're headed in a, a solid direction. You look at how close all their games were last year. This was a good team last year. I know the record doesn't show it. But they were pretty solid. So you've got three games where Vanderbilt uh, is going to be underdog, an underdog, but I don't think they're going to be huge underdogs. Again, just around a touchdown. So they're going to be capable if, if they bring their A-plus game and these other teams don't. I think they're capable of pulling off an upset maybe in one of those three games. And then you have South Carolina. This is the, a big swing game for me, one I could see going either way. Uh, South Carolina is not a team I'm very high on right now. You just look at the record last year. I know they played a brutal schedule, but... They weren't very good last year outside of the game against Georgia, and it's at home for Vandy. If this was on the road, I would probably put this at 40%, but because it's at home, I'm going to say Vanderbilt has a shot. I think they'll be underdogs, but I think it'll be less than a touchdown, more like a three- or four-point spread, um, but definitely potential for, for South Carolina to be a much better team than Vanderbilt. We'll just have to see how it shakes out by that point of the season. So you average this out, and we give them wins, in the green and blue, and we give them losses in the orange and then average the other games out. Vanderbilt actually comes out to be 5-7. and seven. Now, that could quickly go down if, if they lose to Colorado State or Louisiana Tech, which is possible. Uh, but based off of these percentages and this projection, Vanderbilt could actually be 5-7 and seven this year. That would surprise me. I don't know that they actually get to 5-7, and seven, but if they're able to win some of these games that are uh, that are, should be pretty close, they're able to win a few close games. Who knows? Maybe Vanderbilt could get to 5-7. and seven, And who knows? Maybe they could even do a little better and get to a bowl game. I'm not really buying into that, but you never know what might happen. Again, our projection for Vanderbilt, 5-7 and seven in 2020.